Well, we're going to check out a demo of Tivoli Live Service Manager, and to do that, we have a, uh, another guest to go through the demo for us. You want to introduce yourself real quickly? Yes. Hi, my name is CJ Paul. I'm uh, the product architect for this uh, family of products. Uh, what you're seeing here is the, the login screen. Uh, one of the things I want to point out right up front is that this product is uh, enabled for multiple languages. Um, so um, right on the login screen itself, um, there are options for um, different languages that the user can choose to um, use the system in. Um, so uh, as you click through the different languages, not only does the prompts change, but all of the information and the help uh, that is provided by the product also changes. Um, we'll go into the tool right now with um, uh, the user ID of uh, uh, of an end user, and um, here you see the end user logging in um, to a self-service uh, portal. And in this particular portal, they have uh, uh, information presented to them about uh, any particular outages that are coming up. Um, they have some uh, options on the screen that lets them create uh, tickets uh, for any issues that they may be facing. Um, and in addition to that, we also have um, a service catalog um, that allows them to proactively request new services uh, from the organization. So here I'm going to uh, take you to uh, the service catalog. Um, we have lots of different offerings that uh, the user could navigate through um, in different ways. And, and are these sort of out-of-the-box things that you guys provide or, or, uh, or scenarios people have added in? Um, we provide a, a, a large number of offerings defined out of the box with some fulfillment workflows behind them. Um, and then the, the tool itself is actually quite configurable um, so that it's uh, easy for uh, users to add in um, new offerings. Oh, right, okay. And um, they don't have to write code, uh, they can just go in and configure the tool to do that. Um, so just to give you a feel for um, one of these offerings, I can click on um, the office move request. Um, one thing you'll notice here is uh, uh, the the offerings here can cover both your traditional IT uh, kinds of requests, um, like uh, being able to request new IT resources or you know reset passwords, create accounts, as well as uh, doing uh, facilities requests. Mm. Um, so a simple example here is if you wanted to submit a request to move an office, um, it prompts you for the regular kinds of information um, that you can then uh, fill up uh, and uh, just submit the order now button. And, and, and then on the back end, I mean, for something like this, does it sort of involve the facilities management people in addition to IT staff? Yeah, yes, it does. Uh, we have um, uh, different fulfillment workflows. Um, each of these offerings can have their own unique fulfillment workflow um, that can route the request to the appropriate people, okay. uh, whether they are IT or facilities. Um, then once the request is submitted, um, the status of the request can be seen here in the My Request view. It's both graphical as well as uh, um, list-oriented. So you can see uh, different requests that have been submitted and um, who's actually uh, it's queued up for. In this particular case, uh, uh, the, the user had submitted a, a service request that resulted in an incident that is queued up for um, the uh, service desk analyst and, um, and they have also uh, the, uh, submitted the office move request that is actually queued up uh, for the end user manager. Oh, right, right. So it's kind of like tracking your package as the, it moves through the process. As it moves through the process. <laughs> right. um, so this is the perspective for, uh, for an end user. Um, let me now sign out of this tool and show you how it um, uh, looks from the perspective of a service desk analyst. The service desk analyst um, uh, receives the incidents uh, that are reported by the end users and it shows up on his queue. Um, again, he has a uh, ability to uh, look at the, uh, the incoming incidents in different ways, either graphical right. um, or in a list way. And then he can claim the incident ticket and then start working on it. 
um, uh, uh, assessing what went wrong, right. um, and then assigning the work to different people. And th this guy is apparently uh, a productivity genius because he only has like uh, a few tickets, huh? That's right. That, well, <laughs> let me now uh, sign out of the service desk um, analyst view and um, show you the perspective of a change manager, um, which is another uh, one of the user types that uh, uh, we support on this product. So this might be sort of a level above that analyst person or, or someone monitoring the various processes, kind of taking a... They're trying to monitor everyone taking care of tickets and see how that's working out. Um, uh, yes, that's that's um, uh, one class of person. Another scenario is where, um, in response to the incident that was uh, uh, created, they might uh, figure out that to fix the root cause, uh, the, the underlying problem, uh, they have to actually go deploy a patch to an ah, application right. that is running. Right, right, right. And um, now you can... Um, look at uh, you know, the the considerations around deploying the patch. Uh, when you deploy the patch, what are the other business services that are going to be impacted uh, if there is an outage? And right, so right. This tool um, provides you um, uh, both uh, textual as well as graphical feedback. Um, there's a, uh, uh, one of the things you'll notice here that is unique and differentiating is that um, in the industry, most of the service desk tools are essentially just ticketing systems. Mm -hmm. um, what we have done here is to take that a level further um, to then do additional analytics um, that take the information in the CMDB, uh, look at the relationships, and then we run rule-based um, um, impact assessments um, to then um, show the, the user um, what the the impacts would be uh, for this Oh, right, so you can do sort of, um, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? You can do sort of, uh, forecasting is the wrong word, but you can kind of, you can you can do sort of simulations to see what might happen if you deploy a change. Yeah. Ho hopefully helping you uh, avoid breaking things when you make changes. Absolutely, yeah. The system actually can calculate impacts um, and um, show you the, uh, the results in the topology view. It can also work off of historical data um, so uh, uh, it combines the knowledge that you gain from uh, from different perspectives. So I'm going to switch here um, so we can say uh, take a look at uh, this particular change. And um, in this particular case, uh, um, you see that uh, uh, there is an update being made to the to the WebSphere application server. And um, in the in the topology view below, it shows you the particular CIs that are going to be impacted and the ones that are not going to be impacted by. Oh, right. and, and that's that's bringing in the the, the asset management and, and you know other the uh, the inventory mm -hmm. management that you guys have. Yes. So, you know, as part of change management, we can also ensure that if new changes or new software is deployed that we check out the appropriate software licenses right um, before the software is deployed in the environment. Um, and then for the change manager um, as well as for the rest of the IT staff um, we provide real-time visual feedback on the status of uh, um, the work that is being performed. Um, so, for example, if they wanted to get a uh, get an understanding of uh, what tasks are complete and what tasks are pending and what tasks um, are late, um, in this particular case, you will see that uh, there was a patch being deployed um, to WebSphere, and um, some of the tasks are complete. There's a particular task that is in progress. Uh, and then some other tasks are actually running a little bit behind. Oh, right, right. And, and so, so I mean, I, I assume kind of what's happened here is someone has requested some sort of change and, and, and a change manager, a team came together and charted out, here's what we need to do, the, exactly. the steps to deploy that change. Yeah. And then as a manager, they, they've come in and they, they can kind of see the, uh, you know, as, as we would say in the agile world, sort of a radiator of, of kind of what, how things are moving on. And, and you can actually get a sense of what's happening and the, the state of things. In real time, as, right. as it progresses, yeah. Um, so hopefully this has given you a quick um, uh, feel for some of the capabilities of the tool. Um, yeah, definitely. Well, I appreciate you taking all the time to walk us through that. Okay, thank you.